When MIDI Composer 5.0 was first introduced in 2010, one of the biggest changes to the application was the introduction of the Smart Tool. Now, the Smart Tool is a palette or a collection of five different modes that are very common to working in the timeline. You have things like segment mode for lifting and overriding, segment mode for extracting or splicing in, overwrite trim, ripple trim, and what you used to have was this keyframing button, which has now been moved out in Media Composer 5.5. The reason why it's been moved out is to make room for a new button called Transition Manipulation. So when I engage the Smart Tool, I just click on the side of the bar here, and it's going to turn on whichever options or whichever tools I want to have on. I could certainly go in and say, OK, I just want to have my Trim Tools and my Transition Manipulation active. But in this case, I can have them all active. Now, when I move the cursor over the timeline, you'll notice the cursor changes to engage different modes based on where the cursor is placed within the timeline. If I'm on the top of a clip, you can see that I'm in uh, overwrite mode. If on the bottom of a clip, I'm in insert mode. If I'm parked near a transition, on the left near the top, I'm in uh, overwrite trim, and on the bottom, that would be ripple trim. If I'm parked right on the cut, that's going to be dual roller trim. But now with transition manipulation, when I park on an effect, and on a transition, I should say, you can see that I can actually choose the transition within the timeline and adjust its positioning. So just by dragging back and forth, I can change where that transition effect takes place. Also notice I have these little handles uh, near the top and the bottom, where I can click and drag and change either the end point or the out point of that transition. So just by parking over that, you see that double arrow. Now I can drag to the left and make that transition even longer. If I hold down the Option key while dragging, I can do a symmetrical adjustment so that both sides are changing uh, incrementally or decrementally the same on either side. So let's step back out and see what's taking place in the rest of the interface uh, as these changes are taking place. So what I'll do is step back out of that. And when I do go into transition manipulation, notice that the UI changes from the source and record mode to what's called a transition corner display. Now this is something you used to only see in the trim mode. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see these better. Now what this is showing us on the top half, uh, this is the outgoing shot, or the shot to the left of the edit. Now on the bottom is the incoming shot, or the shot to the right of the edit. Uh, these frames over here, these are the first frames of the transition. Uh, the middle frames are where the cut point takes place, or the transition point. And these two frames on the right, these of course would be the last frame of the transition. So you can have an idea of what kind of changes are happening. You can see what frames you're on as the transition begins or ends. So I can just click and drag back and forth here and see how this trans transition is going to change. Now, if I want to be more exact about this, I could still go in and numerically punch in that I want this to be a 20 frame dissolve, and it'll adjust it accordingly. Um, I can also do things like, let's make this centered on the cut. So very quickly, it'll snap back to being centered on the cut. If I want to adjust multiple transitions at the same time, Simply um, shift select multiple transitions, and any changes I make to one of them will take place to the rest. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. So when I make changes here, they're adjusting on the other transitions as well. Same with adjusting the in and out points. Of course, you're only going to be able to go as far as you have material for the shortest clip there. So very easy to, right within the timeline, make changes to a transition just using this transition manipulation button. Now since uh, the Smart Tool was introduced in 5.0, we've tried to improve it in a lot of ways based on editor feedback. Uh, one of the things we're trying to do is to make it so that uh, if you're a traditional Media Composer user, you've been using Media Composer for a long time previous to the Smart Tool, it doesn't disrupt your way of working. And we've added a few options to the timeline settings to help you do that. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see these very important adjustments. So right there you see Default Segment Tool. Now in the example I showed you before, I had both Overwrite and Insert uh, engaged, depending on where I parked the, uh, the cursor. What I'm going to do is say only one segment tool can be active at a time. So when I step back out, you can see that I can't have both Overwrite and Insert at the same time. It's one or the other. And that's going to help you uh, in the timeline so you're not constantly having to worry about where you're positioned on the clip. Now that other timeline setting that I want to show you is default segment tool. And this is going to have an impact on your cutting or excuse me, copying and pasting within the timeline. So here I'm going to choose what my default is. You know, when I launch Media Composer, what mode or what segment tool is going to be the default? 
I can always change it on the fly after the fact, but when I'm doing copying and pasting, it's going to default to whatever I have, whatever I have set here. You can see that since 5.0, the smart tool has come a long way.